uh, multiple time uh, season winner, championship winner for PFL, obviously a WSOF champion back in the day as well. He's our old pal, Lance Palmer. Is he really there? Lance, long time no speak. How are you? Doing well, man. Good to talk to you. Yes, it has been a while. I, uh, I'm i very much uh, appreciative of your time. And I think the Fu Manchu is great. What, what's going on over here? Why? What, what are we doing with this? I think I'd... I think it's more just annoying my wife. I had some chops earlier today, but I figured I'd clean it up a little bit at least to be on camera. Okay, fair enough. I like the look. It's a different look. I like it. Uh, well done. Um, all right, so there's a lot going on in your world. Last time we saw you was a few months ago with PFL, and PFL obviously has their big event coming up um, in November. But uh, the last couple of years, it has felt increasingly like you were unhappy with PFL. Would that be an accurate way to describe the state of your relationship with them? Yeah, I would I would describe it as uh, tumultuous to say the least. Um, basically, since since the year of COVID was kind of the the start of things where we didn't see eye to eye, I guess. And and what didn't you see eye to eye on? Um, I think the main thing at first was that I I felt that we could have still had events at the towards the end of 2020 at least. And there were talks about it. They, they kind of assured us that we were going to, you know, maybe have one fight at least by the end of the year, you know, once things started clearing up and then when the UFC and Bellator and other organizations started having fights again, it was just, it kind of made it a little more tumultuous. And, um, that was kind of when I started to get a bad taste in my mouth and it wasn't that I didn't agree that COVID was serious and that we shouldn't have, you know, people traveling around and stuff. That was not my intention whatsoever. It was more that I disagreed with any type of back pay or some sort of support because that was the time period also where I didn't, where they weren't going to give me a release when I had asked for the release because they weren't able to fulfill my contract with the fights that I was supposed to get that season. So you so that's asked kind of where all that started. You asked for the release and they said no. And what was the reason for them declining? Well, the the reason was that the um it was a pandemic and that it wasn't a breach of contract because of a pandemic. And that was kind of um that was kind of their wording on it. And then I started making the moves to file arbitration because you can't the way that my contract was set up, you can't just file a lawsuit. You have to go through arbitration. Um, and it was in like Washington, D.C. So I had a New Jersey lawyer that is really close with Henzo and some other people who was helping me go through all that. And um, basically got to the point where I could either send it or not send it. And Ali suggested that I not send it. And that was kind of the end of that uh, situation. And there was... Uh, a few different reasons for that. But um, then we got into 2021 and I just felt like I was kind of uh, stuck in the mud and it, it's not fighting is hard enough of a sport. And it's, a, it's very hard if you don't feel like um, the place that you're fighting for is on the same page with you, whether, whether no matter what it is, I just felt like we just weren't on the same page and didn't see eye to eye since then. And, um, it kind of, kind of took from my love for the sport. And so that was kind of, you know, getting through 21 and the first fight at 22, I was like, man, I got to change this up. I got to, it's my career on the line. Every time I fight, it has nothing to do with them. And I had to get that through my head of like, have like being angry or holding a grudge doesn't do anything for me if I'm losing these fights. And so, uh, my last fight against Shaman Marias, I really had, I really took it you know, upon myself to see a mental coach. And, um, he's actually a guy, a lot of the UFC fighters see in Las Vegas. And he helped me a lot just to kind of be present and be in the moment and go out there and, and kind of get back to having fun. It, the reason I fight is because I like to do it. It's not because of the money. I mean, my first fight, I barely made any money, my first few fights. So the money is just something that's come along the way. It was more of, get back to having fun with it and do what I like to do and, um, and get back to where I was. I was on a 11 fight win streak. I was doing really well. And then 
um, kind of felt that I was shelved for 18 months. So that kind of, it just left me with a bad taste. And after my last fight, I, you know, I talked to Don and talked to Pete over text and there was no hard feelings about the situation of, you know, the things that went on. It's just, we didn't see eye to eye on it. And I think it's always going to be that way, but, um, I was glad to end that part of my contract on a win at least. Okay, so I want to get to the end in a moment, but just curious, do you now regret not going through with that lawsuit in 2020? Um, I mean, hindsight's 2020, so I, I should say, yes, I do regret it, but uh, I don't know where it would have taken me. I mean, there was other guys, you know, guys that I actually fought this year that were messaging me before 2021 season when I was in that position and they were saying they weren't even going to get signed back to PFL and, um, you know, unless they cut down to 45 and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's, uh, it wasn't just me that was going through this stuff, but the arbitration would have been, you know, me versus them basically. And I don't really know how that would have worked out. I mean, I could have gotten out of my contract, but there would have, I mean, it would probably would have just cost me a lot of money to do it. Right. And uh, obviously no one wants to make excuses, but uh, would it be fair to say like all that hanging over your head led to some of the performances and, and specifically the losses of the last couple of years? Yeah, I would say that, I mean, from the time that I lost my first fight in that time period was, I mean, my when I lost to Bubba Jenkins, that was my first loss since March of 2017. So, you know, that was a long time. It was five four years and some change, but it was one of those things where I wasn't, I mean, it was, there's a lot that went on for that fight because 2021, we had the 17 day like hotel sentence thing before the fights. I'm sure you know about yeah, that where yeah, we yeah. basically couldn't <clears throat> the keep the quarantine room and all that. So, yeah. Yeah. Like I had no coaches or anybody with me. I was by myself for that whole period. And so on top of all of the feelings I had before that, I'm sitting in a hotel this whole time in Atlantic city, just like stewing and like being angry that we have to go through this protocol of like getting tested every day for COVID and sitting in our rooms and having to like door dash all of our groceries or whatever, you know, yeah. that whole time period. So that didn't help my cause at all. Like my mentality towards everything just was like, by the time I weighed in, I wanted to go home. I was like, and I had a newborn at the time. So I was like, dude, I'm sitting here in this hotel. And I just felt like, I don't know. I just didn't, I felt like all the cards were against me at that point, And I just wasn't in love with what I was doing at that time. So I, I would definitely say it had a lot to do with my performances. Uh, as you mentioned though, uh, you, you did end on a very strong note this, this year, obviously you wanted to get to the finals win the million dollars, all that stuff, but you did end on a win. So now is your contract up with them? Are you a free agent? Yep. Unrestricted. Free oh, agent. There it is. Wow. I didn't notice that. Uh, that is big. Okay. So you are a free, that was the last fight on your deal. Yep. Uh, I would imagine, correct me if I'm wrong. Do you, do you, uh, do you have any interest in resigning or do you want to go elsewhere? I honestly, I don't think they have interest in re-signing me. So it kind of gives me the freedom to do whatever I want to do. Um, obviously I have interest in going other places and there's a lot of fights that I would like to, you know, get involved in hopefully to, you know, push myself over these, this next run of wherever it is. But, um, I mean, the Bellator featherweight division is stacked. The UFC featherweight division is stacked and, even after winning 2018 and 2019 seasons, I still feel that I didn't get any credit for it as far as like the guys that I beat because nobody knows who they are. And you can, you could be the champ of any organization, but if it's not the UFC, you're really not going to get the, you know, the notoriety of being a world champion. And so that kind of was something that was looming as well is you know, I've made a lot of money fighting for PFL over the last few years, but it's also like, I didn't come to this sport for that reason. And it, it's great that it happened that way. And I've taken a different route from a lot of people. And I think like, I was just on the phone with Eddie Alvarez last week. And, you know, he's a guy who took a different route also. I mean, he was in Bellator for a long time and then won the UFC title and then went to one FC. And, you know, now he's, 
might be doing some other things. So it's like all these different avenues that I've taken from the beginning. I mean, I haven't really been an actual free agent since I signed with World Series of Fighting in 2013. So it's wow. been like it's been a really long time since um you know there's negotiation phases and things yeah. like that but not like an actual unrestricted free agent so it's it's interesting because i remember even talking about your situation a couple of years ago um and i think at one point you thought i didn't like you which was never accurate just for the record i want to put that out there uh obviously have a lot of love for the alpha male guys and uh all of you are are incredible and and, and legends of the game you had benefited greatly from the pfl model and you were probably one of the highest earners at 145 in the sport, right? Because you would go through the tournament, you would win back to back. You're, you're getting a million dollars in addition to your, your purse. Uh, but yet it didn't seem like you were a household name or at least the, uh, the guy that should be getting the credit for those wins. And so when you look back on your time with the PFL, do you, do you look back with fondness? Do you, do you, do you wish you, you didn't stay as long as you did? How do you look back? Cause on the one hand, it's, it's the prize fighting business, right? Make as much money as you can. But on the other hand, you you didn't get that notoriety and recognition that some of the UFC guys are getting. I feel, I mean, I, I also didn't really get into the sport for popularity, but yeah. I also like, you want people to like you. You want them to watch your fights. You want them to like your style. I feel like that some people just don't like my style because I'm more of a grappler than a striker. And even though I stand in my, stand in my fights and, and I'll box and kickbox with guys, Obviously, my bread and butter is my wrestling and my grappling. So when I want to win a fight, I'm not going to go out there and just stand 50-50 with a guy and just swing for the fences just for the views. Right. And so I think that's something that has kind of pulled from my notoriety is my style of fighting. People don't appreciate it unless they know the ground game. And that's kind of one thing as well. But I do look back with fondness on the 2018 and 19 seasons because – I feel like that's before that 18 season, there was a lot of people that didn't believe in PFL. And there was a lot of people that didn't think PFL was going to pay at the end of the year. Right. And I know John Fitch was one of those guys. Cause I had talked to him a bunch over the phone and that was, he never ended up signing with them because of that reason. And there was just a lot that was going on during that time in 2017. I actually fought Steven Seiler at the very first PFL event, I guess it was in Washington. And it was like a black tie event. There was like a bunch, it was in like a cigar room. Like this, you couldn't even see in the cage. Like there was smoke everywhere. <laughs> and it was like the first event for PFL. And after that event, I was like, dude, there's no way that they're going to be able to like put on a production that's going to make any money for anybody. And I just, you know, I stuck with it because I believed in it. And I believed in uh, Carlos at the time was running the show and Ray was still there, obviously, but um, those guys were, they were genuine, good people. And obviously Ray Seppo, I love the guy. I'm in the gym with him in Vegas a lot. Um, and he's always been straightforward with me. He's always been, he's always had the fighters backs cause he understands the fighter side of things. Um, but also, you know, they're, it's a business too. So he has to, you know, kind of play both sides, but those guys were, they were the first season and that was like really genuine business deal the whole time like everybody was really good everybody was cool the pfl employees have always been awesome terry wade is one of the guys that i really look up to because he works works his butt off behind the scenes and, and doesn't get a lot of credit for that but just everybody with pfl i don't have a problem with it was just kind of the the way that some of the things were handled um after the 2019 season that really kind of put that bad taste in my mouth but I've kind of let that go because it, the only person that it hurts is me, you know, holding all that weight on your shoulders on a daily basis is just terrible for you mentally. How do you feel now seeing them sign all these names? They're, they're very active these days in the, uh, the free agent market. How do you feel about that? Yeah, it's awesome. I saw they uh, signed Shane Burgos and um, that was a fight that I've always looked forward to um, in the UFC. I was like, man, if I ever sign with the UFC, I'd love to fight him. He's an exciting fighter. Um, I felt like I had some areas that I would do really well with him in there. Um, and after like Josh Emmett's one of my, you know, longtime friends, he's a guy who we both started at the same time together and seeing his success in the UFC also and watching their fight. And I'm just like, man, it's, it's cool that PFL signed him. 
um, and that they signed Marlon Marias too. That's that's going to be a good fight. And you know, I was looking forward to actually fighting on the finals card, but you know, when they were, I was like, oh man, maybe they'll give me that fight, even though my deal is done. Maybe I'll get a like a bridge fight and then renegotiate or something. And that would have been really fun to do, but um, you know, that just wasn't in the cards. So, uh, have you talked to any organizations or are you, are you out there yet? Where, where do we stand? I've just been laying low. Um, we just had a son, um, uh, four weeks ago today. So, wow. you know, I've just been focused on my family and, um, hey, I, and you had a newborn and you had a newborn yeah. back in the, wow. That's a quick turnaround. Yeah. We're, uh, 19 months apart. Holy smokes. How many kids total? Yeah. Uh, just two. Okay. We wanted to do the whole two under two thing and be done. <laughs> okay. God bless. Uh, and all's okay. Oh yeah. Everybody is good. Mom's good. Baby's good. Okay. So, okay. So you had the son, uh, now, uh, okay. So four weeks ago, you're laying low. What's what's the game plan? Honestly, I just want to, you know, talk to, I'd like to talk to Sean Shelby. I'd like to talk to, you know, Coker, Mike Kogan, you know, kind of see where, what they're thinking also, because I mean, I've been around a long time, but I don't feel that I'm done yet. And I don't know, you know, I've had talks with different people and they're like, man, you've done really well. You've made good money. But for me, it's not about the money as much as it is about proving that I can hang with these guys and that I am one of the best in the world. And I've never really gotten the opportunity to do that because when I did win those two seasons, I fought guys like Siler and, you know, Almeida, who are all tough guys, but they're people that if you're not a UFC vet or somebody who's involved with the UFC, you don't, they don't really know what to gauge you on. And so even though I went on an 11 fight win streak and beat a lot of tough guys, they have no idea, uh, you know, how good you are. And I would have fought Pineda in the finals in 2019, but there was a problem with his drug testing. So then I ended up fighting, um, Gilpin a third time that season. So it was like, there was just a lot of crazy stuff that went on and I was looking forward to fighting a guy like that who was going to, you know, kind of put me on the map. Like I've won so many fights, but I've never got the chance to fight anybody yet that could really say like, oh man, Palmer's a real deal. Oh, do, you, do you have like a dream scenario? What would be a dream scenario, dream fight, dream opponent situation for you? I mean, I've always like a guy that I look up to and, you know, I follow on Instagram and I've always loved his fights was Max Holloway. Oh man. And when he was the champ for, you know, I mean, I still consider him a champ. He's a, once a champ, always a champ in my book, but he's, uh, he's one of the guys I really look up to in the featherweight division in the UFC. And he's a guy that I would love to fight. Um, you know, if, if the opportunity came, but he's a guy who's, you know, he's a super dangerous opponent. He's really good striker. He's really good on the ground as well. You just don't see it as much because a lot of his fights are on the feet. Um, you know, he's a guy who's, he's young, but he's been in the game for a long time. So, I mean, he's, he's a seasoned vet and that, that would be an awesome fight. I mean, I, I respect the guy a lot, but yeah, I would love to fight him at some point. That would be cool. That would be incredible. Yeah. And you guys were on top at, at around the same time. So that would be a, a fun full circle moment, if you will. Any advice that you would give to a younger fighter? Like, do you feel, I, obviously, I think you've learned a lot about the business of MMA over the last uh, almost 10 years. If a fighter asked you like, hey, like what type of wisdom would you impart? Anything that comes to mind that you've learned, especially in the last couple of years? Yeah, I would just say go with your gut feeling on things. Um, you know, whether it's that you're ready to make the next jump or you're not ready to make the next jump, just you don't always have to listen to what other people are telling you to do. You can you can make the you can make the jump or not make the jump. Or if you need a few more fights before you hop into the next stage of your career, I feel like that's something you should do, because I took a route that not a lot of people chose. I mean, I was RFA champ and then went to World Series of Fighting instead of the UFC at that time. And um, you know, that was just a decision that the UFC wasn't an opportunity, you know, opportunity for me at that time period. So I just went with what I could do. And, you know, it's not always about who's going to give you the most money. Obviously everybody wants to make the most money they can, but I think when it comes down to it, it's, you know, do what you want to do. Why'd you get in the fight game? 
Like, what's your reasoning? Some people just want to get super popular and, you know, be a household name. Some people want to make a ton of money. Some people, their only goal is like, man, I want to be a UFC fighter. And just whatever your goal is, just stick to it. Because my original goal was to be UFC champ. When I first started fighting, I had, I still have the UFC belt on my background of this computer because I've had this computer so wow. damn long, but that's uh, like, that was my goal from the beginning. And it still is my goal, whether it accumulates or comes to fruition, that's, you know, only time will tell because one, the UFC has to like me enough to sign me and two, um, I got to win fights. So I'm still far away from that goal, but that's still a goal that I, I probably won't be comforted comfortable about unless i get the opportunity to at least go for it will you feel like you're despite all the money and the championships and all that will you feel like your career was somewhat incomplete if you at least don't get the chance to go for it maybe not ultimately you don't know if you win it or not but at least like get in the door there yeah i feel like um i mean i feel like i've done enough outside of the ufc to be able to give myself a shot or a fighting chance and obviously as far as fight pay goes and stuff like that. I know I'm not going to make what I was making in PFL. And that's, that's something that, and I wasn't making a crazy amount compared to what these new signees are getting. So it's not really out of the question to get somewhere near what I was making per fight. But, um, for me, it's more about the actual fights itself. Like the, the journey of being a fighter is not always just about the money and just about the fight purse. I mean, yeah, like you said, I've I've made good money, but I I don't feel like it'll be complete unless I at least get the opportunity or, you know, they give me a chance. It, you know, even if it's one fight, I'll take a one fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I wish you the best. Uh, congrats on a great run up until this point. And, and, and hopefully this uh, free agency period proves to be worthwhile and, and fruitful for you. And uh, hopefully you get what you want. And uh, I think longtime fans would love to see you get that shot in the UFC and, and see how you stack up with those guys. You'd be a great addition to the Bellator roster or the UFC roster. So good luck. Keep us posted, Lance. All right. All the best to you. And I will for thanks sure. for coming on. It was good talking to you. Yes, Long sir. Time, no talk. I'm glad we got to chop it up. Absolutely. Stay in touch, my friend. Will do. All right. Thanks. There he is. Lance Palmer, uh, former PFL tournament champion.